All right. Welcome, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. Today's program is part of the Presidential Primary Sources Project. And our program today is the Ladybird Special, a deep dive into Ladybird's Whistle Stop campaign tour. And it's being presented to us by the Lyndon B. Johnson National Historical Park. The Presidential Primary Sources Project is a partnership between Internet2, the National Archives, and the National Park Service. It's a live series we put on every year from January through April. This is just a quick reminder that by participating today, you are agreeing to be recorded and archived. We do keep recordings of all of our programs on our YouTube channel so that teachers and students can access them later. We're excited to have you. We want you to participate as much as possible. So just a few notes about participation. Um, if you haven't already, find your chat box. It looks like a little caption bubble. That'll be the primary way you can participate today. Um, you can also participate via video if you would like. Just put a note in the chat box and I'll work on setting that up for you. As we go through, again, we want you to participate as much as possible. It's more fun that way. Um, just be really respectful of our interactive tools. So make sure that we are only responding to what our presenters are speaking about um, and asking questions that relate directly to what they're speaking about. All right, and I just wanted to say thank you one more time. This is our website here. If you're interested in looking into some of our upcoming programs, they are every Tuesday and Thursday until April. Um, or if you wanted to find some of the recordings from previous programs, you can find all that on our website. And with that, I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing and pass it over to Mary, who you all came to see. Wonderful. I'm going to share my presentation and we will get started. Okay. Here we go. Okay, looking good. I hope. Okay, good morning. My name is Mary Orms. I'm an education and interpretation intern at the Lyndon B. Johnson National Historical Park here in Johnson City. Um, we're in Texas, and I am so excited to be with you this morning to share an exciting story about Lady Bird Johnson. Um, just to get us started, has anybody ever heard of Lady Bird Johnson? Anything at all? Feel free to say in the chat. Okay, it looks like we have a yes. We've definitely had some some idea of who this woman is. Love it. So hopefully we're going to tell you something new this morning, um, build on some prior knowledge. Um, in Texas, a lot of people know of Lady Bird leading an effort to clean up America's highways and inner cities by planting flowers. She also worked with her husband to create laws that limited the type of advertisement along highways and roads. But today we're going to talk about a special trip that Lady Bird took through the American South in 1964. This was called a whistle stop campaign tour because it all took place on a train. Um, we'll get into more of these details later on, um, but for now, let's take a closer look at Lady Bird. Here's our plan for this presentation. Um, we're going to talk a little bit more about Lady Bird Johnson. Um, we'll go into the details of the whistle stop campaign, and then we're going to end with something really fun, which is a little bit of a primary source investigation. So Lady Bird Johnson was born in 1912 in Karnak, Texas, in a big white house. Karnak is really close to Louisiana. Um, it's way on the east coast of, or the eastern border of Texas right here with this hat. Um, so she, she was born there. Um, Karnak is a, a really pretty area with a really large lake called Caddo Lake. It's really beautiful. Um, there's a state park there where people today can go camping, canoeing, kayaking, fishing, all that kind of fun outdoor stuff. Lady Bird was a Texan through and through, and she loved representing Texas and the South and returning back to Texas as often as she could throughout her adult life. Um, but after high school, Lady Bird went to the University of Texas in Austin, which is a long ways from home. Texas is a really big state, so she moved right into the middle of that state and she worked really hard in college to earn two degrees. Um, she studied history and she also studied journalism. 
So she was really um, passionate about learning about the past, reading about uh, American history, um, and all different kinds of history and political ideas. Um, but she was also really passionate about documenting that history with her journalism degree. Um, she loved to keep diaries, and later on in her life, she even kept a video diary. Um, so we actually have a lot of Lady Bird's perspective on a lot of things that she did, which is really special. Um, so moving on to this third little graphic here, um, this is the White House. So a lot of people know Lady Bird for, of course, becoming the first lady um, to her husband, President Lyndon Johnson. So the year that Lady Bird graduated from college, she met Lyndon Johnson, a young politician who, of course, would go on to become the president of the United States. They dated not for very long at all, and they quickly fell in love. Um, Lady Bird would go on to support her husband's goals of using government to help the, uh, help the average American live better lives, and she worked alongside her husband throughout his career. Like I said before, Lady Bird led efforts to make the nation more beautiful, and one of the ways that she did that was by encouraging states to plant flowers along their highways, something that she's very, very much still remembered for today, especially here in Texas. Let's see, wrong way. So who was Lady Bird Johnson? Here we have two images that we can look at. Um, Lady Bird was a kind and gentle woman who supported her husband's career, but she was also a determined, smart, passionate woman who was not afraid to take matters into her own hands whatsoever. So here we have two images that we can look at. Um, this one here is a painting. Um, this is Lady Bird's official first lady portrait. Um, in this painting, she looks elegant, she looks kind, um, she's wearing yellow, she's bright, but she's also, um, you know, the picture, the painting makes her really blurry and soft, so she's an approachable, kind, gracious, graceful woman. Um, yeah, and she was that person, but she was also this person too. So in this picture, this is a photograph from the Whistle Stop campaign. Um, this picture on the right shows a pretty different side of her. Um, she's on her whistle stop tour. She's working and strategizing al along other women. Um, we see Lady Bird here as a strong leader, a woman of action. She's this woman right here, the second from the right. Um, and then actually the woman to her right on the very edge is her daughter. Um, but this is on that whistle stop campaign tour. Um, so they're on the train, moving throughout the South, trying to encourage people to vote for her husband. Um, also, Keep in mind these dresses that these other ladies are wearing, um, we might return to them a little later. So in those two images, we saw two sides of Lady Bird. She was a kind, gentle, dental, sensitive woman who listened to other people and cared deeply for them. But she was also a strong and independent change maker who was passionate about taking action to make the country a better place to live. Um, and we all have complex personalities like this with character traits that can feel like opposites, but that really work together to make us who we are. These traits describe who we are and how we move around the world. So um, I wanna take a couple minutes for each of us to think about a pair of opposite traits that describe you. Um, Lady Bird, for example, was sensitive and strong. Um, maybe you are quiet and brave, creative and humble, caring and ambitious, something like this. Um, so take a minute to think about what makes you you, what kind of pair of character traits you are, um, feel free to write them down, keep them to yourself if you want, but um, please feel encouraged to share them in the chat or on the screen so we can all learn a little bit more about you. I'll give us basically one minute to do that. So think, 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 write down if you want and feel free to share too. Awesome. Yeah, nervous but loud. I can empathize with that. I love it. Awesome. Keep it going for a second. Yeah, myself personally, I feel like I am nervous but loud, um, just like Kennedy Elementary shared. 
I feel like sometimes I don't know what to say, but when I figure out what, how to say it, I am there. Careful but adventurous. That's such a fun one. I love it. Oh, thank you so much for sharing. Awesome. So as we move on, um, let's try to keep this idea in mind. Um, having two character traits that seem really different, but they, they work well together, especially against a, a particular goal. Um, so yeah, we can think about, we can continue to think about Ladybird this way and the way that, you know, her character of being someone who's sensitive and strong pushed her to take great action for her husband's campaign. So let's talk about the whistle stop. Uh, less than a month before the 1964 presidential election, First Lady Lady Bird Johnson traveled for three days through the American South by train. This practice is known as whistle stop campaigning. Um, this is when Lady Bird set out with her team, invited guests, members of the press aboard a personalized Lady Bird special train that we can see in this photo. Um, they visited eight states and stopped in 47 towns making fast speeches to people in each town. It's a huge undertaking. The First Lady believed that traveling through the South was especially important ahead of the election because her husband, President Johnson, had recently signed the Civil Rights Act, which many, piece, which many people in the South disagreed with. Um, though Lyndon and Lady Bird were passionate about advancing civil rights, they also wanted the South to be on board. Um, they wanted the South to feel included in the national community and they really wanted the South to vote for Lyndon Johnson. The Whistle Stop Tour, this one was actually the first time a First Lady took her own campaign trip completely separate from her husband, completely independent from him until he met them at the end. So again, keep these dresses in mind. Um, we'll see them again a little later. So Lady Bird and her party traveled 1,682 miles, so 1,682 miles, and made 47 stops between October 6th and October 9th of 1964. Um, they started here in Washington, D.C., so that's the green dot on the map, um, and finished here in New Orleans, Louisiana, um, stopping 47 times along the way. So even more dots than you can see here. Um, you actually can't see your screen, Mary. You might need to reshare your PowerPoint. Oh, dear. Thank you so much. No problem. Share. Good. There we go. Thanks. No problem. Um, so let me go back and see this slide again. So you can see the Ladybird special, all the women that worked alongside Ladybird to make this happen. Um, and their fun matching outfits. Yeah, so here's that map. Um, we can see Washington, D.C. way up here, up higher on the map, further north, um, and the green dot. And then we can see them trace all the way down, zigzagging throughout um, the East Coast and the South. So they stopped 47 times, um, making lots of speeches, meeting lots of people. Um, awesome. <laughs> meeting lots of people and um, making lots and lots of speeches, trying to persuade people um, to get on board with civil rights and to vote for her husband for another term. Yeah, so Lady Bird spoke in front of large audiences. Um, she encouraged them to vote for her husband and she encouraged them to extend the, the Southern hospitality that she was so proud of and so proud to be a part of to all Americans, um, regardless of race, or any sort of prejudice that they would have had against them uh, beforehand. So here's a really fun picture. We can see Lady Bird. She's here speaking at the podium, um, standing alongside her husband, who's here, President Lyndon Johnson. Um, this is on the final stop of the Whistle Stop Tour. So this is when President Johnson came and joined in to close out the tour uh, in New Orleans. So uh, I'll read this out loud for us. Um, Lady Bird leveraged her Southern heritage to try to find common ground with white Southerners who opposed the Johnson administration while also showing black Southerners that the president supported them. So like I said before, she interwove themes of Southern hospitality and kindness throughout these speeches to encourage Southerners to get on board with the civil rights movement while also speaking the language of the South. She didn't want anyone to feel like they were being attacked, but she wanted them to 
to get their act together and get on board. Here's another great picture. Um, Lady Bird was really proud to be from Texas, I mentioned before. Um, she was able to, to interweave her grace and kindness with her strength of conviction to persuade the South in language that they understood. She didn't want anyone to feel left behind or insulted. She wanted the South to feel included in civil rights. So she said, I wanted to make this trip because I'm proud of the South and I'm proud that I'm part of the South. So she wanted to, to go home, talk to her people um, and remind them that the president was for them. He was with them. He understood um, their needs and wants, but he also wanted to pull the South into the future of an America that is united um, and is pro civil rights. So now we're gonna to get to do something really, really cool that I'm really excited about. So here at the Lyndon B. Johnson National Historical Park, uh, we tell the story of Lyndon and Lady Bird Johnson, as you probably could have guessed. Um, we do that in a lot of different ways, but one of my favorites is by using the museum collection. Um, at our park, we have a whole staff of people that cares for the important objects in our collection, um, items that witness the history of the 1960s, for example, or, or things from Lyndon's childhood or Lady Bird's childhood. So we take a really good care of our, of our collection here so that we can share them um, with the public and uh, keep track of these items that witnessed history. Uh, we can learn a lot by looking really closely at these objects and we'll follow these three steps for our investigation today. So first we're going to observe, we're going to use our senses, we're going to say, what do we see? It seems really simple, but we're going to try to break that down really small, try to see um, not only like what is the object that we're looking at, but what are, what are the design characteristics that are there? We're going to think about colors, think about shape, um, think about like functionality, like what is an object for? Um, and then we'll go to number two, contextualize. We'll learn the object's story. So we'll learn what that object saw um, and what, what it was um, around for and you know what was it used for, where was it, things like that. And then lastly, we'll think on it. We'll think, what can we learn from the object? Um, what does this object say about history? Like what, um, yeah, what, what can we learn from this object that tells more of a story of, um, of its history than we maybe couldn't have without the object? Um, so really quickly, I'm gonna answer a couple questions that are in the chat. How long did the trip take? Um, so between October 6th and October 9th, so three days. Um, yeah, I love these comments about um, Lady Bird looking fun and fashionable. She was definitely someone who was known for her personality and for her fashion choices, for her really fun accent that's um, great to listen to if you have a minute to. Okay, so really quickly, I am going to turn off this camera and I'm going to meet you over there in our curatorial workroom so we can look really closely at some objects. I'll be right back. information you're doing soon. Okay, can we see these dresses? We can, but because you're, I'm going to stop your screen share so that we can see them better. Awesome. Okay, now hopefully if I stop talking, people will be able to <laughs> see it. <laughs> okay, I'm going to move this a little. Awesome. And give me just one second. Okay, amazing. So it sounds like everyone can see the dresses, which is our most important part. Um, so I'm sure you remember me telling you to remember these dresses, keep them in mind, um, and here they are. So these are actually two of the blue Ladybird special dresses that uh, real women wore um, while they were on the Ladybird special, while they were doing this whistle stop campaign tour through the South. 
Um, and we are lucky enough to have them in our collection, um, even though they're from way back when of 1964. Um, I'm gonna do one thing and turn this volume back on just in case they can be able to hear you. Eh. So sorry. Awesome. Okay, yeah. So I wanna use our senses here. So with these dresses, um, we first wanna ask, what are they? So they're dresses, they're not, not um, suits of pants, they're not shorts, they're not casual, but they're not floor length dresses. So this isn't the kind of dress that we would wear to go to like a dance or a ball. It's something that we could totally work in. It's got the collar, so it's kind of mimicking like men's, men's clothing in some way, um, but it's definitely, a working dress. Um, and we want to talk about the colors, right? So they're primarily blue, uh, but they have red accents, white accents. So this is definitely reminding us of the USA, definitely thinking patriotic colors, bright colors. We want people to, to look at these dresses when women are wearing them and to think about the country as a whole. Um, it's pretty small, but right here you can see an embroidered LBJ. So we want people to be reminded about uh, President Johnson's campaign at every step of the way. So we want to make sure that when we look at these dresses, when we look at women who are wearing them, we think these are proud American women um, who are campaigning for President Johnson, who want you to vote for him. Um, they also chose women to, to be these stewardesses or hostesses um, on the train who were nice, who were smiling, who were excited to meet people, excited to greet people and bring them in to be a part of this campaign journey. So um, can anyone share something else that they notice also about these dresses? Like, um, yeah, I'll leave it to you. I'll give everyone a minute to look at them and think and share. <laughs> They're for skinny women. That's a fun, that's a funny thought. Um, so these dresses are really small. Um, uh, it's kind of a funny observation, but I definitely noticed that too. They're knee length. That's a great one. So they're not um, long like ball gowns, like I mentioned before, but they're also really modest. They're not like too, too party. They're definitely more like working. Um, yeah. So these women who wore them definitely would have felt like they're wearing a work uniform. Um, and that's exactly what they are. They're short sleeves. So you can roll up your sleeves and get to work and not have um, anything in the way. These women were shaking lots of hands. They're serving food. They're handing out flyers and pamphlets and buttons and all sorts of campaign things. Um, uh, love it. Yep, they have collars. So a um, lot, of, lot of work. A lot of working um, uniforms have collars. We want to look polished and respectable. Okay, I like the, we have a comment that they're blue for Democrats and not red for Republicans. So that's a pretty, that's a cool symbolic uh, color to pick up on. Um, they definitely wanted to um, kind of subtly remind the, the audiences they're standing in front of just who to vote for. Um, and who they were there to represent. So that's a really good one too. Um, yeah, the waistline. So they all have these like little red, white, and blue belts, pulling it all together to be extra patriotic or pleated. Yeah, you guys are doing really, really super, super great. I love it. Okay, we'll move on to something really similar um, just to get a look at another dress. So here we have this one. Um, I'm actually gonna carry you over here so we can see really closely. So this is a similar dress that potentially Ladybird would have worn on the, on the Whistle Stop Tour herself. So we have a bigger embroidered LBJ. Um, we have a little bit more of a sleeve. So maybe this is a dress for someone who is, um, you know, not so much like working as much, still not a full sleeve, but um, someone that wants to look a little bit more elegant with these big shiny buttons. Um, and this dress is pretty long too. 
Um, as far as symbolic colors go, we're, we've gone red, which doesn't necessarily mean that it's, you know, we're not here to support a democratic candidate, but um, we still just want to be patriotic and really stand out, still be very bright. Absolutely. Yeah. Does anyone have any questions about these dresses at all? I can get as close to them as we want, which is really fun. Um, these two are the exact same dress. We're just showing it front and back so you can get the whole kind of um, whole perspective. Do they have pockets? No, they do not have pockets. This red one does, but the blue ones do not. Um, if you were to ask me, I would think they would just want them to the dresses to be really like flat and form fitted. So they look very perfect all the time. They don't have anything crinkled in their pockets. Um, I love this question. How did they carry all their stuff? Um, they, in pictures that I've seen, they have ladies with lots of baskets um, and carrying things kind of in their hands, but they're not putting stuff in their pockets again, because they want to look really prim and proper and dressed up. Um, I like this question. Did LBJ also stand for Ladybird? Um, LBJ, the man, was named Lyndon B. Johnson. So he was he was Lyndon Baines, um, and she was Lady Bird. Um, it's not her real name, but it's a childhood nickname that she went by. And I think that LBJ probably really liked that about her. He was someone who wrote his initials on everything. So he kept her nickname, Lady Bird Johnson, LBJ, which matched his Lyndon B. Johnson which also matched their two daughters. <laughs> they also named LBJ names. Um, and they even had dogs that they named Little Beagle Johnson. So the LBJ goes through and through and through and through and through. It's absolutely a family brand um, that we see all over the place. Okay, so now I'm gonna kind of turn this over to you to be able to, um, to, be able to do an object investigation yourself, which is very exciting. Um, Okay, couple of quick questions. Were those uh, actually worn by someone? So these two, yes, these were worn by those um, stewardesses, those helpers that were on the campaign trail with them. Um, they were donated to a train museum who later gave them to us um, just because they're a little more relevant to our collection. Um, so yeah, people kept them as historical, you know, artifacts of their own personal history. And then we were able to um, put them in our collection so we could share kind of more of the story of Lady Bird Johnson. Um, do people get to keep these dresses? Yeah, they did. So they ended up with them um, personally, and then they uh, handed them over to a museum kind of after, after the fact, and they wanted to build up their, their history, I suppose. Um, a question from Stephen, was her name actually Claudia? It was, her name was Claudia Alta Taylor. Um, but I can tell you that um, as a little baby, she had a, a nanny or a nurse who um, gave her the nickname Ladybird because she said that she was as pretty as a ladybird. And she kept the nickname kind of all throughout her life. And like I mentioned before, I think LBJ met her, realized that she too could be an LBJ, and he ran with it. You can see the initials all over the place. Awesome. Okay. Now we're gonna do something really, really fun and kind of um, hand it over to you to do your own object investigation. So we have all sorts of items from the Whistle Stop tour. Um, we'll get to look at them and do our own object investigations. So we have this object, this is a postcard. So um, you can see all the various stops along the way. And then I can actually take this out and show us the back. Yeah. So there's the back of the postcard. It says, um, please don't forget to vote on November 3rd. And it's signed Lady Bird Johnson. Making sure that anyone who sent this postcard would have the, the, the real um, message and the real point of the whole thing front and center. Do not forget to vote. Okay. Did she actually write that? Yes, she did. Um, uh, we also have some menus from, from the Whistle Stop. So there are some lunches that were served at some of the stops and we have um, the outside of the menu and also the inner pieces. 
which are really exciting to look at because they have some really funny, some really funny items. Um, I'm going to try to get as close as I can so we can read this. Yeah, so a lot of these items are meant to be really Southern. Um, my personal favorite um, is the Y'all Fresh Country Eggs. Let me try to get really close to read. <laughs> Herring is a funny choice. Yeah, because I really wanted to have something for everybody. Um, lots of grits, lots of oranges, um, pecans, things like that that were really kind of local to the South. Um, and then here's the second page that focuses more on lunch, um, which has my favorite item um, right down here in the in the desserts, LB Jello. <laughs> LB Jello, like LBJ Jello. <laughs> so they're definitely really clever in all of the, the branding items that they did. Um, they wanted everything to have, you know, these fun trains on them. They wanted um, everything to be thematically kind of on point with what they were going with. Yeah, it's all very witty for sure. So here's that front page again. Um, yeah, and then we have some of these items. Let's see. So this is a matchbox. Just a little tiny, like for scale, so small, <laughs> little, um, little tiny item. These would have been really inexpensive to, to make so that um, everyone could take something home with them. Everyone could remember this. So we have a lot of items like this in our collection. Um, the question, why does it have a plane? <laughs> a plane and not a train. Um, I think this would have been just a branding choice, um, trying to make it look kind of whimsical and fun. Um, we, do, we have still like the, the 1964. Um, we have really bright colors. There we go, here's our train. Yeah. So we're keeping a bluer color palette by adding um, some really bright yellows to be really striking and stand out. Yeah. And we have these, which I wonder if anyone has an idea as to what actually these are. <laughs> Any thoughts? A bag tag. Okay, great idea. They're really small, this big. Whistles. Yeah, they are whistles. So again, being right on brand with the whistle stop tour, um, they wanted to be able to hand out little whistles for people to take home with them. Um, little mementos, try to keep the sound alive. Um, I would blow them for you, but that would not be, that would not be in the best interest of the object. But again, we're keeping with um, a red, white, and blue and yellow color theme. We have the Ladybird special. We have our silly little airplane. Yeah. We have these, which I'm sure people have seen many times before, but our campaign buttons. So really big flying whistle stop, making our way through the South. Um, and even things as little as little cups. Did people blow whistles at their events? I sure think so. I think they wanted people to get really excited, um, really fired up about, about the campaign and um, show their support. So I'm sure they were trying to make people be as loud as they could possibly be. Um, we can totally think more about that. Um, kind of lastly, we have two. That would be very loud. It would be very loud, but that's kind of the point. We want people to feel like they have a lot of people on board with the campaign. So these are just little cups. Um, again, they could have just had completely plain cups um, for things like water and coffee, whatever, um, but it, they wanted to have everything branded and, and memorialized um, so that people always remembered and so that um, we kind of had a cohesive event. So no one, <laughs> no one stumbled upon this event and didn't know what was going on. Um, we had these pennants that would have been used on sticks. Let me try to separate them really quick. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so these would have been held up on big sticks um, to welcome Ladybird to town. They say, hello, Ladybird. <laughs> um, something for people to wave up in the air. Um, red, white, and blue. Yeah. Very exciting stuff, especially like with the um, the text shrinking in like this, you can really um, you can really picture him or Ladybird um, being welcomed into town, you coming out on her train, choo choo choo, etc. Um, <laughs> okay, um, I think what I will do. I'm really enjoying all of the questions that we're getting, and love to answer them for you. See if I can turn my camera around. Switch camera. Perfect. So um, as far as some of our questions, um, was LBJ jealous of the attention Lady Bird got? I love this question because LBJ was the president who loved, um, loved the media, loved being on camera, loved um, talking to the press. Um, definitely being a part of his own like PR campaign. Um, I don't think he was necessarily jealous of all of this like attention and all of this branding. I think he was really, really grateful that his wife was someone who um, was brave enough to kind of go out there on her own. Like I mentioned before, she was the first uh, first lady to go on an independent campaigning trip. So um, it's definitely a little bit unheard of, but uh, I think he was really grateful that she would go out and do this for him. And at the same time, you know, while she's gone, he's definitely campaigning himself um, also in the North. So it kind of is a way for him to be in two places at once, if you think about that. Um, the question of were there any threats against her during the trip? Um, I know that safety was a big concern. I don't think that we have any recorded like really serious threats, but she took Secret Service with her. So she was, she was um, definitely protected and definitely prepared um, the South could be a little bit contentious at that time period, so I think she was ready to, to meet those challenges as, as they came. Um, another question, <laughs> didn't she call him and critique his press conferences? Yeah, so we're really lucky to have a lot of um, recorded phone calls actually with the LBJ library. Um, so we are able to listen to a lot of LBJ talking on the phone if we want to, um, and we have a lot of his conversations with Lady Bird. So she was really active in his political life. Like I mentioned before, she has a journalism degree and a history degree. So she is able to um, really understand like the way that he's talking and, and ways that he can be campaigning better, ways that he could be presenting himself um, more intelligently or maybe more coherently um, communicating better. So she did call him and, and critique some of his press conferences, telling him things like, you need to talk slower um, you need to be louder, you need to look up from your notes more often, things like that, trying to make him um, the best that he could possibly be. Great. Okay, thank you so much for these questions. Um, I'd love to help get you any closer to any of these objects that you wanted to see um, more closely while that we have them out for you. Um, this big table of stuff I can show you. Um, and I'd love to work through that three-step process. So. We can have our close looking, our contextualization, and then our thinking um, of what, um, what can we learn from these objects? Like what do these objects tell us more about the history? So um, does anyone have anything they'd like me to get closer to? I'll turn my camera around there. Has anybody worn the dresses since then? Um, well, for a while they were in you know private hands so it's kind of impossible to know but i can tell you that um <laughs> with our curatorial staff they're very careful to take the best care of these dresses and other clothing items that we have um, and that pretty much means never wearing them again <laughs> um, they're really small like we talked about before so we always want to be really careful not to stretch them or pull on the seams in any way um, as fabrics and clothing get older, they get more and more fragile. So we definitely try to keep them, um, keep them on hangers um, or keep them on mannequins that, that fit them. Yeah. So we definitely don't ever wear these dresses. Awesome. 
We'll get you closer to some campaigning items. <laughs> if you attended um, a Ladybird special whistle stop, stop, like if you were at a city along the way, which one of these do you think you would have wanted to take home with you? Maybe for me, a postcard. Um, uh, yeah. Oh, a whistle. Yeah, absolutely. They're so small and they're so cute. And you could you could blow it any time and remember that you were there. Remember the excitement um, and just the coordination that went into all of it. The menus are really fun too. They're really witty and detailed. Yeah. The buttons are great too, especially buttons I feel like are making a comeback. People, people like to be able to put them um, onto items as a way of saying, I was there. Yeah, so we have the cups and the flags. You could be able to use them as decor or whatever you would possibly want to remember. Remember that occasion and remember to vote LBJ. That was the whole point of all of this campaigning. So remember that um, Lady Bird put on a fun event for you, spoke to you really nicely, and promised you that the president would be looking out for your interests as well. Okay, does anyone have any questions or um, comments or anything like that. Um, any questions about how we care for our objects, um, how we choose, you know, what to put on display at what time, anything like that? Why did the postcard show Texas where the trip did not go? I, this is a great question. Um, I would probably say that um sorry i would probably say that um ladybird's proud of the south proud to be from texas um so she wants it to be up on the map um how do we get our items that's a great question so a lot of the items in um, our collection are from family themselves so we're a, a park and a museum that's dedicated to telling a really specific story so um a lot of the items that we have been donated from the family to keep Kind of keep that story going. Um, we also have things like these blue dresses that were, um, you know, initially donated by an individual and then later by a fellow museum. So um, it's a lot of personal donations, things like that. Um, yeah. Did Ladybird ever visit our site? Yeah, this is a great question. So our um, our park actually and like covers. Here, I'm gonna turn this around. <laughs> Um, our park covers um, OEJ's uh, home, so we have two districts. One district is his ranch where he loved to be. Um, he was born out of that ranch. He um, came back there during his political career and he actually passed away out there. So we have the cemetery where he's buried too. So we have basically all parts of his life encapsulated in the park. We even have the house they moved into um, in town here in Johnson City. So. Um, we've got we've got all of it. Um, yes, Ladybird is buried out here as well. So um, LBJ and Ladybird lived at the ranch um, for quite a time. LBJ passed away there, and Ladybird lived quite a lot longer than he did. So she was around um, here for for quite a long time. So she saw it transition into a national park, which was a dream of her husband's, and she loved uh, welcoming visitors to the park having people come see where, where she lived and where her husband grew up. Um, yeah, she loved telling the story of his life. Okay, any more questions? I think I mentioned this, but yes, Lady Bird is buried out here too, out at the ranch um, alongside her husband. Um, we have lots of people come to visit them. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm happy to answer any more questions um, at all <laughs> and also get even closer to any of these objects that you're more curious about, you have any questions about. Yeah. Um, I, I like this question, how do you become a park ranger? There are a lot of ways into that career. Um, I myself am not a park ranger. I am an educational intern. Um, but it all starts with getting a, a degree. Um, 
yeah, so a lot of park rangers have history degrees like Lady Bird and like me. Um, and a lot of people have degrees in things like biology or environmental science. Yeah. <laughs>